So in today's video, we're gonna be talking about the 21 highest paying work from home jobs. And this is going to be without a doubt, the best video available on the internet. And this is something where if you really pay attention to this and you get one of these jobs, it can literally change your life in three months. Many people have done this. There's interviews on my channel of people who have gotten jobs in 10 days, 14 days. There's even a 16 year old who was able to get a job using these methods that I'm going to talk about in this video. And this is going to give you a bunch of different options for really good remote or work from home jobs. And this is going to be 100% backed by the best data available on the internet, as well as my own experience helping a bunch of people get these types of jobs. So if you appreciate this type of content, go ahead, cheers the like button, and let's get right into it. All right, so just a few years ago, I was actually stuck working like 13 hour shifts during the pandemic because I worked in healthcare. I was extremely stressed out, I was burned out, I was pretty depressed and I had anxiety and all those things that you can talk about. And this was after doing everything right, going to school, getting a doctorate, becoming a pharmacist, right? I did everything that all the experts say that you should do. Yet I felt trapped in an endless cycle of eat, sleep, work, repeat. Then I finally decided to change things and I tried working remote for the first time. I went to Puerto Rico with my best friend, John. I met a bunch of other people who were also working remote. I had an amazing time time as well and my life was never the same again. And after doing this, I knew there was absolutely no way I could ever go back to working like a normal nine to five job where you go into the office. And there are so many benefits of working from home or working remote that I'm going to go over in this video as I present these different options to you. And chances are, depending on your personality, many of these options are going to be really good for you. So there's gonna be great options if you're introverted, extroverted, there's gonna be really good options if you're somebody who's artistic or somebody who's analytical. There's also gonna be great options if you're somebody who's really ambitious or you're somebody who just wants a super chill job where you can just live the rest of your life without having to worry about money. So the first one is going to be copywriting. And I'm gonna tell a story about someone who I'm gonna call Jed. So Jed was basically a journalist. He was making about $60,000 a year, but he really did not want to continue doing journalism. It just wasn't something that interested him all that much. And so he looked for other opportunities in order to get paid for his writing skills. And the opportunity he found was copywriting. And he basically doubled his salary and he also enjoyed his job even more. So what exactly is copywriting? It's it's the ability to sell or market a product or service using the written word. Now, if you've ever gone to Amazon, the people who write the product descriptions are copywriters. If you ever, you know, turn on your TV, the people that write the scripts for those advertisements are copywriters. And if you've ever looked at a video sales letter for an online course, the people who write those are also copywriters. And it's basically a way of communicating the value of your product or service in such a way where you prove to them that it's going to solve whatever problem that they have. And this is an insanely valuable skill. Not only right off the bat can you make money from it as a freelancer, so you can do it kind of as a side hustle, but you can also get a full-time job. And it's one of the best skills you could possibly learn if you want to start a business later on down the line. So if you're somebody who who is really attracted to sales or marketing, but you don't really wanna show yourself on camera, you wanna do it more through the written word, copywriting can be amazing for you. Now, according to Glassdoor, copywriters make about $51,000 a year, but you have to understand this is the entry level role. And also a lot of the copywriters that report probably just do it part time. According to BLS, full-time copywriters make about $80,000 a year. Now I'm gonna give all of these a score from one to 10, with 10 being the best for getting a work from home remote job. And I can't give this one a 10 out of 10, even though it's a super valuable skill just because of the fact that it is pretty hard to learn how to get good at copywriting. It is a skill you really have to work at. And so for that reason, it is going to take a little bit longer than some of the other ones on this list. And I'm going to go ahead and give it an eight out of 10 money score. Next on the list, we're going to talk about social media operations. And this isn't just an operations job. This is basically any job related to social media because this is absolutely blowing up right now. And it's one of the industries that has the most opportunity. So for this one, I'm actually going to tell the story of my operations manager, Hat. And I actually didn't get permission from her to tell this story. Uh, so I'll keep it really vague. But basically, Kat runs the day to day operations within my business. And a lot of that does involve managing my social media profiles. And Kat's long term goal is to actually start a social media company herself. And she's very open about that. And that's awesome. Some people think that you shouldn't tell employers about that. And I just could not disagree more. Um, employers, when they are on YouTube or anything like that, if they see you have a YouTube channel and you're making really quality videos, for instance, that is going to look incredibly attractive to them. And so Kat is basically getting paid to learn super valuable skills that align with her future goals. 
Good job, Kat. So if you look up social media operations on LinkedIn, there's about 7,000 job postings. And if you look it up on Glassdoor, they're making about $57,000 a year. Now this one is really good, but it's another one where it might take a little bit more time than a bunch of the other ones that I'm gonna put on this list. So for that reason, I'm gonna give it a nine out of 10 money score. Next one I'm gonna talk about is web development. And this is exactly what it sounds like. You're basically going to be writing code specifically for websites. So it's basically the easiest type of software development that you could possibly learn. And a lot of the time, people who start off in software development will learn web development or front end development because it's kind of the easiest one to learn. It's not nearly as technical as back end. Now, if you look up web development under jobs on LinkedIn, there's about 31,000 results. And if you look it up on Glassdoor, you make about $82,000 a year. And there are countless examples of people who have started off in software development by getting into web development first. It pays really well. It's relatively easy to get into. Now, the truth is this used to be one of those careers where let's say on a scale from like one to 100 for your skill level, you could probably get into web development with like a 20 out of 100 skill level. Now you have to probably have something like a 40 or a 50 out of 100 in order to get into it. So you see a lot of people kind of complaining about how it's a lot harder to get into this now. But with that being said, if you use a lot of the methods that I tell you about on this channel, specifically making sure that you actually have pretty decent skills, creating a portfolio that clearly and easily showcases that you have those skills and then sending that portfolio to the right people in such a way where it's much more engaging, which I talk about on this channel, you will be able to easily get a job in web development. And this is one you could probably get into in about three months or so. So this is a really good one, a little bit harder than some of the other ones on this list that are basically like a cheat code. So I will give it a nine out of 10 money score. Next on the list is going to be tech sales. And one person who I interviewed on my channel who was able to get into tech sales was Kevin. And he was basically a laid off construction worker. So he was making really good money in construction, but the jobs were kind of like hit or miss, like he'd get a job and then he'd have a few weeks or a month where he wasn't working. So it was pretty good money, but it was also relatively hit or miss and it wasn't stable. And then the pandemic came and he got laid off and there was a long period where he could not find any work. And so he got on the internet, he started looking into different careers that had a lot of opportunity and tech sales popped up. And he was able to get a job in tech sales in a very short amount of time. I believe it was actually 29 days. So this is currently one of my favorite careers. I mean, this is basically a cheat code. There is so much demand in the market right now for people who have this skill set. And this is one of the ones that I recommend the most right now on this channel. Now, I know everybody is kind of like freaking out about the tech layoffs, even though it's just like a very small percentage of people who are actually laid off. And it tends to be at the bigger companies who, you know, let's be honest, they hired way too many people and they didn't have work for them. But tech sales is probably one of the most recession proof jobs you can get. And the reason for that is because people who are on the sales or the marketing team directly contribute to the company's bottom line. Whereas there's a lot of positions out there that are kind of like infrastructure or operations, that sort of thing. And those are the positions that a lot of the time will end up getting cut first. Not to say they aren't important, but companies prioritize things differently in a recession. Now, this definitely is not for everybody. There's a lot of people who kind of look into tech sales and they decide that it's really not the best thing for them, but it can be phenomenal for the right person. And I would say if I really just wanted to make it to $100,000 a year, it's fast as possible. If I was 18 right now, and I literally just wanted to make it to $100,000 a year as fast as I possibly could, tech sales is the one I would go for. So according to Glassdoor, technology sales representative, which by the way, is the entry level position, they make almost $90,000 a year. So this one is without a doubt, one of the best on the entire list. I'm going to give this one a 10 out of 10. Next, let's talk about the one that I would personally do if I was 18 right now, and I wanted to get into the job market. And that is digital marketing. So I told you about the 16 year old James who was able to get a job and he lives in Australia where they allow 16 year olds to work. And he basically was thinking, should I go to college? Should I go to, you know, trade school? Like, what should I get into? And he looked around a lot and he found digital marketing and he thought it was a really cool skill. He thought it, you know, matched his personality. It also had a ton of demand and he could get into it relatively quickly. So he tried to get into it and he was able to land a job at 16 years old. Obviously he did not have any previous work experience because he was a 16 year old and he was still able to land a job because he did the things that I recommend on this channel. First of all, he found an in-demand valuable skill that matches his personality. Then he learned some of the core fundamentals of what you need to know in order to get into that skill. And then he showcased a portfolio that very clearly showed that he actually knew those skills in such a way where it's easy for people to find it. And then he applied to the right companies and he sent them that portfolio. And he was very easily able to land a job at 16 years old. And I believe he was making over 
$40,000 a year. And on top of it, he was only working part time. So he was only working 30 hours per week because he was busy with other things. Now, if you look up digital marketing on LinkedIn, this does fluctuate quite a bit, but there's over 160,000 results. And if you look up digital marketing on Glassdoor at the entry level, it's about $60,000 a year. So yeah, this is the one that I would personally choose just because it matches kind of my skill set and what my goals are in life if I was 18 right now. You're probably going to make a little bit less money than tech sales, but you can still make it to that six figure mark within about three to four years. This one gets a 10 out of 10 score as well. Okay, next one on the list, I'm actually going to combine two different ones, and that is IT help desk as well as IT security, also known as cybersecurity. So the reason I'm combining these is because I want to put as many really good options on the list as I possibly can. But this is another one of the best options you can possibly go for. I would argue this might be one of the easiest ways for you to possibly break into the technology industry without going into sales. And one of the reasons why you want to break into the technology industry is because very simply, it's probably the best industry you can possibly work in. It has the most opportunity, the best benefits, the best pay, the best work-life balance, the best ability to get remote jobs, et cetera, et cetera. Now, the best thing about the majority of entry-level IT careers is they absolutely do not require a college degree. If you get a college degree, great. That's another great way to get into IT, but they do not require one. And in many cases, you can get in with a certificate. And in a lot of cases, which I've actually talked about on this channel, you can get in even without certificates. Now, there is a plethora of different IT related jobs. One of them would be IT security specialist. If you put that in on LinkedIn, you're going to see 8,000 results. If you type in IT security specialist on Glassdoor, you're going to see $83,000 a year. And again, keep in mind, this is the entry level role. There's tons of other jobs you can move into that pay much better than that. So yeah, IT is phenomenal. This one gets a 10 out of 10 career score from me. Next, let's talk about something that isn't technology related, and that is going to be travel agent. Now, this is one that, again, you can definitely get into it without a college degree, and there are many examples of people who have had successful careers doing this. It's also one that you can do part-time, right? So you can do it kind of on the side, even as a business side hustle. You can do it part-time, or you can do it full-time if you want. Now, if you type in travel agent on LinkedIn, there's over 60,000 results. Now, you can differentiate yourself as a travel agent by specializing in certain areas. So let's say you live in an area of the world that a ton of people want to travel to. You can actually differentiate yourself as a travel agent by living in that area and kind of knowing all the best attractions. And basically what you'd be doing is you would be helping to book flights, book hotels, uh, tell people where all the best attractions are, kind of like maybe even make a little bit of a timeline for them when certain places are open, etc. Now, according to Glassdoor, travel agents make about $48,000 a year. This one is also a little bit harder to break into. So you're probably not going to be able to break into this one in three months and start making like $50,000. But I did want to include this one on the list because I have seen a lot of people be successful with it. So for that reason, it's still a pretty good one, but I'm going to give it a three out of 10 career score. Next on the list is going to be graphic design. This is one that can be extremely good if you go into the right niches and you learn the right skills. So for instance, let's say you're somebody who specializes in YouTube thumbnail design. That is going to make you much more valuable than a general freelance graphic designer. But honestly, I think you should specialize even further. Let's say you're somebody who really likes watching personal finance content on YouTube. You can specialize in personal finance thumbnail design. Because let's be honest, all of the different niches on YouTube are slightly different in terms of what works to get people to click the videos. So I get people literally reaching out to me every day trying to be like my thumbnail designer on YouTube. And I'll look at their portfolio and they have like graphic design stuff in their portfolio that has nothing to do with YouTube. And a lot of the time, if they do have thumbnail content, it'll be like a Minecraft video or something like that, right? And that isn't going to attract me that much as somebody who's sort of in the personal finance niche. So this one can be good if you niche down enough. And the way you want to do that is basically just look at what you watch a lot of on YouTube, right? So if you're very familiar with certain niches on YouTube, that would be the type of thumbnail design that you would want to do. So you really want to niche down even further. But overall, something like thumbnail design does take a long time to get good at. It's something where you might design something that looks pretty, but it doesn't actually get the clicks, right? And unfortunately, that's just not going to work. So there is an artistic and a technical side of thumbnail design because you have to get really good at Photoshop, but there's also a little bit of a marketing side as well. So for that reason, this one is going to get a three out of 10 money and career score from me. Next on the list is very similar, but a little bit better in my opinion, and that is going to be video editor. Now, personal brands are absolutely taking off. You've probably seen like Mr. Beast, for instance, he was offered a billion dollars for his brand. He turned it down. Gary V basically said that he shouldn't accept anything under $10 billion. 
and honestly, even that might be too little. You've seen these creators launch $100 million brands with a single video. So the creator economy is just incredible. I mean, there's literally, you know, channels where it's just somebody in their kitchen recording videos that are getting more views than an entire news network. And they have no idea how to monetize it yet. They're just, at, this is just at the infancy right now. Creators like that, a lot of the time are only making like 10, $20,000 a month, but pretty soon they're going to be making a hundred thousand, maybe even a million dollars a month because they're not properly monetizing their brand. Whereas these news networks are getting less views, but they're making like a hundred million dollars a year. So when it comes to video editing, this is another one where you really need to niche down. So another example of this, I'll just use personal finance again. You want to learn how to edit videos, obviously on YouTube. So if you're reaching out to YouTubers to try to get a job with them, do not send them your wedding videos. That is not going to impress any YouTubers. What you want to do instead is send them YouTube videos that you've edited. And the easiest way to do that is to just start your own YouTube channel. And then of course, if you are able to edit videos for other YouTubers, that's great as well. And if you want to appear even more valuable, edit videos for other YouTubers that are in the same niche. Because again, every single niche has different personalities and sort of like a different meta of what works. And there's this thing that's emerging on YouTube called retention editing. And this is basically where you get people to stay on your videos while they're on YouTube. So basically you're just making the videos a little more engaging and you increase the retention of the video which makes YouTube, you know, send it out to more people. So this one is an incredible one to get into, but video editing in general is saturated. But if you niche down, you do what I say on this channel, this one can be incredible. But overall video editing in general, I'm gonna give it a six out of 10. But if you niche down, like I said, this one could be like a nine out of 10 or a 10 out of 10. Next one on the list is going to be an insurance agent. Now, this is another one of those where you can get into it relatively easily. And essentially what you're going to be doing is you're gonna be talking to people who are interested in insurance and you're going to be trying to convince them to buy your company's insurance or figure out what the best type of insurance is for them. Now this one can be a little bit sketchy because some of the insurance companies can try to get people to buy insurance that they don't need, right? So a lot of the time the best insurance to buy is just going to be term insurance, but they'll try to get you to buy like whole life insurance. But with that being said, I'm not being biased in this video. I'm just telling you which jobs are relatively easy to get into. So if you look on LinkedIn, this one has about 69,000 results. And if you look on Glassdoor, you're going to see they make about 70 thousand dollars a year so yeah this is a little bit of a soul-sucking job if you ask me but if you need to get a job right away this can be a good one i'll give it overall a four out of ten next one on the list is data analyst. And this is another one of my absolute favorite careers you can get into at the entry level. So data is incredibly valuable, incredibly important. You've probably heard data is more valuable than oil or gold. And if you think about it, it makes complete sense. Like imagine your favorite sports team. Let's say your favorite sports team is the Los Angeles Lakers. If you send out a million ad impressions, like a million people see an ad for a Los Angeles Lakers jersey, and you don't know who are actual Lakers fans, you might get like, I don't know, let's say 100 sales. But if you send out a million ads to people who you have data on and you know exactly who they are and you know maybe you even know that they're looking for a jersey right so they're in the market to buy a jersey you're probably going to get a thousand sales ten thousand sales maybe even like more than that so you can see the difference that makes that's like a 100x maybe even like 500x difference from just randomly sending out ads to people so that's why data analytics is so incredibly important and if you type in data analyst on linkedin you're going to see 363,000 results and if you look up data analyst on glassdoor you're going to see they make about seventy-one thousand dollars a year at the entry level. Now, this is one where it's a little bit harder to get into, in my opinion, than something like tech sales, IT, or digital marketing. And I've actually looked for a good course that basically takes you from like A to Z, zero to hero, and teaching you how to get into data analytics. And I was never able to find one, but a really good place to start is the Google Professional Certificate for Data Analysts. That might not get you all the way, but it'll probably get you like 80% of the way there. So this one, I can't quite give it a 10 out of 10. If I'm able to find a course for that, that just takes you from zero to hero, I will give it a 10 out of 10, but this one I'll give a nine out of 10 at this point. Next on the list is going to be a creative director. And of course, the one that I would recommend recommend going into is not like working in Hollywood or working for big advertising agencies, but actually working for a social media company. So this is another position that I recently hired. I got Job on my team and he basically is a creative director for the YouTube channel. And as a creative director, you're going to help a company in all things related to their creative direction that involves artistic work. So if you look this one up on LinkedIn, there's about 16,000 results. That's pretty good. And if you look it up on Glassdoor, there's 142,000 results. Now, this is not an entry level position per 
per se. This is one where it's going to be easy for you to get in if you do have some experience. But with that being said, if you niche down and you become a creative director specifically for a YouTube channel, for instance, that's how you can actually get in without having any other previous experience. And again, you would do that by following the steps that I lay out in this channel of making sure that you have the right skills, you understand the niche that the person is in, you create a portfolio, you send it to them the right way, and that is how you can get a job. So one of the reasons I hired Job, for instance, is because he's very familiar with YouTube. He's somebody who watches a ton of YouTube just like I did. And in my interview with him, he actually brought up other YouTubers that I have watched for years. But yeah, this one, I am going to give a 6 out of 10 score for just because of the fact that it's not entry level and it's not something that everybody watching this video could easily get into. Next on the list is going to be a claims adjuster. And this is somebody who works in the insurance industry and you would basically take calls from people who are trying to claim their insurance. So let's say somebody had like a house fire, for instance, and they're trying to get some type of money back from their insurance company. So they say, hey, there's $10,000 worth of damage. I want to get $10,000. And as a claims adjuster, you would say, okay, you know, send me the information, send me the photos, uh, send me the details of what happened, and you would determine how much you're going to give them uh, or if you're going to give them anything at all. So this is kind of another one of those jobs where, yes, it is relatively easy to get into, but it can also be a little bit soul sucking because let's be honest, you have the best interest of the company in mind. So your goal is to give them the least amount of money possible. And of course, some companies are going to be better about this than others. But yeah, I think you get my point here. If you look this up on LinkedIn, there's about 2000 results. And if you look it up on Glassdoor, you're going to see they make about $54,000 a year. So this is one that you can get into relatively easily. You don't need a college degree. You don't need previous experience in many cases. Uh, but with that being said, I'm going to give this one a four out of 10. Next on the list is going to be instructional design. This is another one of my favorite careers out there right now. So this one absolutely blew up during the pandemic. And I have a friend who is in instructional design and he was kind of just working as a freelancer. And during the pandemic, he was actually able to start a fully fledged business from this where he makes hundreds of thousands of dollars a year. So this is one that you can work part time, you can do as a freelancer, or you can get a full time job or you can start your own business. So it's extremely flexible. And basically what instructional design is, is you are going to be creating instructional or educational content online that's interactive. A lot of the time this is going to be video content. So you'll be watching either an animation or a video from somebody and then a question will pop up, right? So you'll be learning about something and then a question will pop up that will test your knowledge. And if you ever had an entry level job when they do the training at the very beginning and they have this sort of thing where, you know, situations pop up like a customer is really angry at you or there's some sort of spill in a store, something like that. Um, and they will tell you exactly what to do. And then they'll ask you, what would you do in X, Y, Z situations? Chances are an instructional designer created that. Now, if you look up instructional design on LinkedIn, there's about 17,000 results, but this is one where there's a lot of different like job titles related to it that are different. So there's actually a lot more results than that. And I actually just find this extremely interesting in general because they're basically trying to make learning more fun, right? So they're kind of trying to gamify learning when it comes to instructional design, which I think this is going to get even bigger in the next five to 10 years. This is also a very artistic endeavor. So you are going to be kind of creating videos, you're going to be creating animations, and you are going to be educating people as well. So this can be a really good one if you're somebody who wants to do art as a career. And on Glassdoor, they say you make about $78,000 at the entry level. And of course, it gets much higher than that once you move up to the higher level position. So this one is going to get a nine out of 10 career score from me. Next on the list, we're going to talk about SEO specialists. Now SEO stands for search engine optimization. And this is basically how you get blogs and websites to rank on the top of Google. And I cannot emphasize how important it is to have your website ranking on the top of Google on the first page rather than on the second page or the third page, because it can literally make like a 100x or a 1000x difference in the amount of money that your company makes. Now, there are a ton of different names for different SEO related roles. I'm not going to go into all of them, but just know that this one has a ton of opportunity. If you look on Glassdoor, it says SEO specialists make about $59,000 a year. Of course, that is the entry level role you can move up into much higher level roles down the line. So yeah, this is one that you can get into relatively quickly. There's a lot of different SEO specialist type roles out there that I don't have time to get into in this video, but this is one where I'm going to give it an eight out of 10. Next, let's talk about executive 
assistance. And this one is basically exactly what it sounds like. So you are basically gonna be an assistant to somebody who's high up in a company like a CEO or an executive. So you're probably gonna be doing things like managing a schedule, booking flights for them, fielding calls, etc. Now, one thing that's really interesting about this role that is a huge upside to me is you are very likely going to be often communicating with other kind of like high level people. So if you're somebody who has the goal of being an executive later on in life, this might be a really good opportunity for you because you're gonna be communicating with them, you're gonna be talking to them. It might even be a great way for you to network. And there's actually a story I heard of somebody who wanted to be a producer in Hollywood. And this is kind of the way that she got into that. She became an executive assistant for a real producer in Hollywood. And she was able to network with a bunch of other people and do a really good job. And eventually she became a producer herself. And if you didn't know, becoming a producer in Hollywood is incredibly difficult. It's like one of the hardest jobs you could possibly get. But with that being said, this is a high stress job and becoming an assistant alone, it doesn't have a lot of vertical growth to it unless you have like a very specific goal. And also because of the fact that it's a little bit harder to get into. For that reason, I'm gonna give this one a five out of 10 score. Next, let's talk about virtual recruiters. And this is basically a recruiter for a company that just works virtually. It's that simple. Now, as a recruiter, you're basically basically going to go out there and look for the right people to fill certain positions for companies. And on LinkedIn, there's actually over 243,000 results when you type in recruiter. And if you look at this one on Glassdoor, recruiters make about $69,000 a year on average. Now, this is one where there is a lot of incentive. So if you're a really good recruiter and you recruit for the right types of careers and you are, do a really good job basically finding the right people for those careers, companies will pay you a lot more. Now, overall, I'm going to say this one, it's a little bit harder to get into. It's it's also really difficult to be a good recruiter. Typically, you have to have a lot of experience in a particular industry first, right? So the best way to become a recruiter is to first have a lot of experience in that industry and even maybe even better is in that role that you're recruiting for. And then you can become a good recruiter because you'll be able to easily judge whether people are really good at what they're saying they're good at. But with that being said, you know, because of the fact it's a little harder to get into and get good at it, I will give this one a five out of 10 money and career score. Next, let's talk about a really good super niche role called a link building specialist. So you remember when I was talking about SEO and I talked about how it's so important to get your blog on the top of Google on the first page? Well, link building specialist is one of the most important positions to make this happen. So essentially what they do is they get backlinks from other websites to your blog or website. And that might not sound you know, all that important. You're, oh, you're getting backlinks? Why would anybody care about that? But that's one of the main ways that Google will actually tell that your article is high quality. So there are people that are professionals at literally reaching out to other websites all day long and trying to get backlinks from those websites. Now, according to LinkedIn, link building makes about $77,000 a year. And this is kind of an entry level position. But with that being said, you're going to have a lot more success if one, you're an expert on whatever niche your blog is in. And two, you're really good at negotiating. So they're not going to just give you backlinks for free. You have to give them value first. And that means you have to get good at negotiating. But with that being said, let's say you're an absolute personal finance nerd like me, you could work for a personal finance blog and reach out to other personal finance related blogs and try to get backlinks from them. And because of the fact that you're so familiar with the industry, it would give you a massive advantage. But again, on this one, I'm assuming you're an 18 year old that has no skills, or anything like that. Um, and for that reason, I can only give this one a seven out of 10 career score, but it can be a great opportunity for the right person. Next on the list is going to be an online tutor. Now, this is one that I did myself for many years. It's something that you can do kind of as a side hustle. You can do it part time, you can get a full time job, or you can even start your own business doing online tutoring. And the more niche you get here, the better. I was actually able to get super, super niche with this one. And I made over a hundred dollars an hour. So basically, you know, there's like science tutors, right? That would be like a massive niche. And then you would want to niche down even more. So in my particular case, I tutored people for pharmacy because I was a pharmacist. And even then, I don't think you're niching down far enough. Even when you do that, you want to niche down even further. And what I did in my particular case is I tutored people in a specific pharmacy entrance exam called the PCAT or the pharmacy college admissions test. And that is how I was able to make over $100 an hour when I was relatively young and inexperienced. Now, if you look 
look up online tutor on LinkedIn, you're going to see 267,000 results. So there's a ton of opportunities for online tutors. And if you look it up on Glassdoor, you're going to see about $44,000 a year. So I think the reason most people don't get paid very much as online tutors is because they don't niche down enough. That's the common mistake that you just see over and over and over again. If you're just a science tutor, for instance, that's definitely not niche enough. And so because of the fact that you sort of do have to be an expert and you have to kind of understand your niche, I can't give this one a super high rating, but I will say this is probably the best side hustle that I personally ever did. And for that reason, I'm going to give this one a six out of 10 money score. Okay. So next on the list is going to be quality assurance analyst. And this is basically somebody who makes sure that some sort of software product or website, when they're rolling out a new feature, that it doesn't have a lot of bugs or it doesn't have a lot of things that are going to irritate the customers. And this is an incredibly important position, not only because you make a quality product for your customers, but you're also able to get that product out much faster than other companies are able to. So there's a lot of companies out there where if they're able to roll a product out faster, that might save the company millions or even tens of millions of dollars if it's able to be rolled out maybe like a week before. So if you look up quality assurance analyst on LinkedIn, you're going to see about 41,000 results. And if you look it up on Glassdoor, they make about $67,000 a year. Now, keep in mind, that's just the entry level role. Now, one thing about quality assurance is yes, you do need to know a little bit of coding in quality assurance, but it's not nearly as difficult as something like a back end software developer. So yeah, this is a really good one that you can get into relatively quickly. I'm going to give this one a nine out of 10 remote career score. Next, let's talk about one of the most popular careers. You hear so much about this one, and that is software developer. There's basically like an entire industry around teaching people how to become software developers because it is such an in demand skill. Now, there are many different ways of getting into software development, which is basically coding. You're going to be coding different computer programs, uh, different software, different websites, etc. Now, some people get into this by getting a computer science degree or a software engineering degree. Some people get into this by going to a tech boot camp that costs typically around like $10,000. Some people get into this by doing certifications. Some people get into this by self teaching. Some people do online courses. So you're going to hear lots of arguments about the best way to get into software development. Everyone has their own opinion on it. But one thing is for sure. And that is if you are able to land a job, this is one of the best jobs you can possibly get. If you look at the financial independence, retire early subreddit, which is basically a bunch of people who want to try to retire by the time they're 30 or 40, you're going to see this is the most common career that a lot of these people have. And on LinkedIn, if you look up software development, you're going to see 280,000 results. And if you look it up on Glassdoor, amazingly, even though it's an entry level job, you're going to see that you can make about $95,000 a year. Now this one, it used to be incredibly easy to get into like five or 10 years ago, you could basically learn like the basics of the basics, create a good portfolio, have basic interview skills, and you could get a job in this. It's gotten a little more difficult now. It's not super, super easy like it used to be. But with that being said, it's still relatively easy to get into compared to a ton of different careers out there. So this is one where you probably are not going to be able to do it in three months. It's probably going to take you something more like six to 12 months in order to get into software development. But with that being said, I still have to give this one a 10 out of 10 score. Now, one thing I say on this channel is always go where the opportunity is. This is the most important thing. Like drill that sentence into your head if you have to, right? Go where the opportunity is. Write it out on a piece of paper, put it up on your wall, you know, put it up on the ceiling so you see it when you wake up in the morning. Whatever you have to do, go where the opportunity is. And all of these on this list are careers where there's a good amount of opportunity. And of course, the nine out of 10 or 10 out of 10 ones are the best ones. But with that being said, if you're not sure what career path is right for you or which one you want to go into, and you want to sort of like sample them, sort of like a sample platter at a restaurant, what I recommend is the Google Professional Career Certificates. And basically, the reason these certificates were created is because there were certain positions at companies like Google, Facebook, et cetera, that they were having a ton of problems filling. They were having a lot of issues finding people that had these skill sets. So instead of relying on colleges, which weren't doing a good job, they decided to create their own professional certificate program. And that's exactly what they did. And they created the Google Career Certificates. So you can basically audit these completely free. And if you want to get the certificates, it doesn't cost very much. It's about $39 a month. And I made a video where I went over the top five Google professional certificates. And I highly recommend you check that out right here.